Are you a mountain person or an ocean person? You see, today's video is all about designing these mountains and actually decorating them as well. And we get even more mountainous as the episode goes on. But I just kind of wanted to come on here and share that I myself am actually an ocean person. You see, I used to live in the west coast of North America and I was surrounded by mountains all the time. Now, don't get me wrong. At the time, I was absolutely fascinated, enamored and astounded by the mountains that I was living amongst. It was kind of like living amongst sleeping giants there. But when it came to the mountains themselves, like I would enjoy hiking up them. And I really thought that I was a mountain person at that time. But then well, relatively recently, within the last year or so, I lived for a little bit um, by an ocean and I've actually now discovered that I am more of an ocean person than a mountain person. However, I still love the mountains. I think that they are an amazing feature on this earth, if I'm going to be quite honest here. And so with today, I'm going to be trying to capture their splendor, their beauty, and their gargantuan nature in my SimCity creation today. <laughs> so yeah, if you are a mountain person or an ocean person, feel free to comment below. And there's always, of course, nothing wrong with being both. So anyways, for those of you just joining the SimCity Create a World series, my name is Michael and I run the Sovereign Gaming in a Life Sims channel, the channel where I build worlds lots and also share my thoughts on video games and I guess on mountains and oceans too, in some kind of retrospect there. So today I really wanted to, uh, today's we've got quite a bit of a project ahead of us and you're going to see that it is actually a much bigger project than I had anticipated here and it's going to span a couple of episodes here. But what makes it so, what makes it so grand, what makes it so great is that we are not only going to detail the hillsides uh, that the mansion neighborhood is, uh, is sitting upon right now with some trees and actually some terrain paint, but we actually move on to create some real mountains. And honestly, those mountains make these, uh, <laughs> these cliffs and bluffs look like hills. So I'm very excited to show you guys that and how that's going to turn out. Now, when we come to the mountains, I have decided that I actually wanted to emulate the Three Lakes region from the Sims 1 Vacation Expansion Pack, and I'll explain why in a bit. Did I say this, uh, the Three Lakes region from the Sims 1? I think I really meant the Sims 2. <laughs> Sorry about that mistake there, you guys. Anyways, uh, what you'll see me doing here before I get into why I selected that, um, what you see me doing here is placing some of the cypress trees. I believe they're the Italian ones and they're actually the short ones, even though the short ones are pretty tall. And I'm using these trees as a way to divide the lots in the mansion neighborhood up. Um, at the time that I'm recording this, episode I still haven't named it quite yet so I can't wait until that poll runs and ends and all of that sometime in November or October I suppose I'm so far ahead with the world at the time that I'm recording this that I'm like I I might have outdone myself here but anyways um, I decided to use these trees as a way to kind of divide the lots because it just felt a lot more richer and I also wanted to surround the little driveways that went up to those uh, four 64 by 64 lots at the top of the mansion hill there so i really liked how they turned out and even though i was using the small cypress tree or whatever it's called i think you guys can see in the metadata uh window there it's they're still pretty tall and i actually considered using them in the blue water village uh suburb neighborhood but it just felt a little too grand a little too splendorous a little too rich to uh to really reflect a middle income class neighborhood such as the suburbs there so i decided not to use them for that but i definitely wrote them down in my notebook so that i could reuse them here and what i'm doing is i'm just uh, bordering off the different lots i'm trying to add in a little bit of privacy for all of the lots on the mansion hill there and what makes that such a um 
And what makes that very important in this case is just that it, it does give off that feeling that it's very much a closed off neighborhood. And that's how I really want to convey that this is a gated community without actually having a gate in there. Like if you're driving up and you are coming across these cypress trees, you're going to feel out of place unless you actually live there. And that kind of feeling of segregation, a, a sense of privacy, not segregation, but a sense of privacy is really what I was trying to go for when it came to these mansion hills. After all, I imagine that not only will the founding Sim families live on these hills, but also celebrities will as well, and they'll want that privacy too. If you are wondering, the trees are actually spaced evenly. I separated them by one square. I don't know what the actual units are called, but they're one square separated, separated by a single square there. So. Whatever that unit is called, feel free to comment below. <laughs> I'm just being a little lazy and I'm not actually looking it up. One square grid, I suppose. I don't know how to sound graceful saying it. Anyways, they're evenly spaced. That's the good news here. And uh, I was kind of struggling a little bit with the curves there just because I had to kind of eyeball it. And so I just wanted to have like the end leaves touching the end leaves of the next tree over. So that was kind of the way that I eyeballed it there. It is going to be unfortunate uh, that I just can't uh, start the editing game mode only uh, because of that shopping spree on The Sims 3 store that I've told you guys about or earlier that blocked me from actually accessing it because this would be something that I would actually check in the editing game mode to see if it is actually translating properly. So yeah, that is, uh, that is unfortunate. It's something that I'm just going to have to roll the dice on and the good news, like even though I've worked so far ahead in this world and all that, is that I am anticipating that there will be some further edits, like some deeper edits that I'll have to make by the end of this series when it comes to exporting this world. Like I plan to export this world pretty far in advance. However, I also um, I also think that uh, the yeah, I also think that I might run into some problems or there might have to be some fixes that I'll have to make after I export the world. That's just the nature of it. And especially without me uh, getting access to the editing game mode, there's really nothing too much I can do about it, unfortunately. Yeah, so I'm not looking forward to the exporting of the world and like watching all of my work kind of go down the toilet because uh, <laughs> because I haven't had access to the editing game mode. It's really hard to see how things are translated in the game. So I'm just trusting what Create a World is showing me is indeed accurate. So yeah, that is um, that is certainly something that is on the list of things to do here. And um, and yeah, so luckily that's so far in advance and that's something that you guys probably um i might make an episode or two about that happening if it is something substantial that i've needed to change or anything so yeah if uh if that occurs that'll occur at the end of the series it'll be a whole thing saying like this is what i had to fix after exporting the world and all that but i also wanted to mention that i do plan to put different kinds of spawners up here so you have those bug spawners those gem spawners seed spawners i believe there's also animal spawners as well uh, that you can insert and then that of course comes at the end of everything because i do not um i do not wo like working with those white rings that show up because if you if you've seen in my uh, in my episode in my lot building episodes, I do use some of those spawners, but I also kept them last for the very same reason, in that they're just kind of visually distracting. So I'm keeping those for last as well. Um, but they'll definitely be around when I export the world for the first time, and hopefully everything goes without a, goes off without a hitch. That's what I'm hoping for. But I am also preparing for the worst, which is why I've worked so far in advance, is because things don't get messy until you start trying to export your world and then when that happens that's when shit likes to hit the fan if i'm gonna be honest with you guys and that's when things go wrong so i've worked very far in advance uh on the sim city world here anticipating and giving myself a lot of breathing room so that the export process can be done without me feeling pressure to get something done on time for you guys or having to meet a deadline for what i'm promising in um on my channel and all that so yeah that's uh that's kind of something that is uh something that i considered <laughs> it was a little bit of foresight being applied here because i've worked with exporting worlds before and it can be a nightmare to say the very least but yeah spawners are going to come last they're going to be on uh they're going to be everywhere 
pretty much. I'm going to be selecting specific places for specific spawners and all that. So you guys can expect there to be an actual area where you can only find the rare seeds or uncommon seeds are found here or fish here for the rare stuff and all that. So yeah, that's uh, that's really the idea here. An aspect of gameplay that I think gets overlooked is honestly those spawners, which is why I'm kind of mentioning them here, because this Honestly, like the hills here look pretty empty. There's nothing to really do in them. And that's why I'm going to be placing spawners all over the place. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do that so that it actually gives your Sims a reason to go out in the woods if they are a Sim that likes to collect. Like if you play with werewolf Sims, they're really good at finding collection stuff. You even have a trait called gatherer. So there's lots that one can do with spawners and it adds a lot to the gameplay and it's certainly something that I want to also continue here. Uh, when it came to foresting the area around the Mansion Hill neighborhood, I did actually decide to use two deciduous trees and one coniferous tree um, or evergreen tree to really just kind of show the area a little bit. I only use the evergreen tree in really high points just to kind of show that slight temperature or climate change as you head up, uh, as you increase your altitude and all that. So that was uh, something that I did take into consideration because I want the hills, the mansion hills to look good in fall and spring and also winter as well and having those evergreen trees there in winter is something that i place there on purposes because i want there to be a little bit of green amongst all of the white snow so yeah um that was really the idea with that there i think it turned out really nice i like the balance between all of the trees and at this time i'm not spending a whole lot of time on vegetation so if the forest looks a little sparse it absolutely is and a big reason for that is just that i have a lot more areas to forest and a lot more areas to add trees into even in future episodes i'm going to tell you right now like i build a pretty dense forest at one point in time and i know that i have got more forests to actually build and all that and it's going to take up quite a bit of objects as well so i want to try and just be a little more uh careful with how many objects i'm placing into the world like that includes trees and vegetation and all that because this is a large world i've i think i mentioned it in the last episode this world is not for the faint of heart i wanted to deliver on a big vision and that is what i fully intend on doing and whether or not it actually can start in my game is a whole other story because I have to export the world. And when I do, I'll find out a lot more information then. I think it'll be fine if I'm going to be completely honest. I've done crazier things uh, in Create a World before, but again, I haven't done it to a scale like this before. Like I know that I've like I've exported with dense forests before, but I've never exported it with multiple dense forests. And with the forest around the Mansion Hill area, I also wanted it to look different from the Three Lakes area that we will be working on as well this episode. And just to be clear as well, I'm not completely sold on the signs on the bridge, uh, on the southern end of the bridge there. I've just placed them there for now. I, I think I like them. This will be an area I'll revisit when I actually do some of the detailing episodes. So yeah, it's uh, it'll be on the list for something to revise and edit and all that. So feel free to drop any comments or suggestions um, in the comment section below. And so yeah, uh, you know, once we move on from here, the really exciting part of it is the actual Three Lakes area. And so I made it into a huge mountain that dwarfs the uh, Mansion Hill neighborhood that we've been working on these past few episodes. And the reason being is that I really wanted a mountain in SimCity and I also had a lot of land that I still needed to use and what better way to use land than to put a big mountain right in the middle of everything. <laughs> Um, another thing that I just wanted to mention is that the pace of this episode has really, like, the pace of the series really has changed at this point because before I was really, especially in the downtown neighborhoods, I was really focused on that object placement and the road layouts and all that, whereas here, it's the very opposite. I need to actually switch over into focusing on the geography, what the area is going to look like, and what lots I want to include on there as well. So. I'm sure that you guys have already noticed, but you see this big mountain in the bottom left corner and uh, it's called the Three Lakes area named after the Sims 2 Bon Voyage vacation sub neighborhood. But where are the lakes? Well, you see, I decided not to put lakes in it. Now, don't don't panic yet. 
the lakes are on the way. But you see, create a world is kind of funny. When you put water bodies into certain areas, um, like I would have to, firstly, I would have to lower the land to a level that's similar to what the ocean is. And I didn't want to do that because I wanted the lakes to be on, um, on, ele on an elevated plateau. So that wasn't going to happen, first of all. Secondly, when you do, uh, when you build on water that is created in Create a World, it automatically assigns it as uh, salt water. Now, I believe you still need to like use a freshwater designator even in The Sims 3, like when you go to edit in lots and all that, but it gets a little glitchy when you try to actually uh, shape out a lake or something and then you place a lot on top of it and then the lake gets super deep as well. And that's not something that I really wanted to deal with. I just wanted to, um, what I wanted to put in the three lakes area was a 64 by 64 lot for a mountain resort of some sort. I'm likely going to try and attempt to make a build on that based on the Outlook Hotel from Stephen King's The Shining, so that will be super fun. Um, and then I put in three other lots, two of them I believe are 64 by 64s, those are two of the three lakes, and then the third one is a shorter one, so it's going to be a smaller lake, so you've got the three lakes right there. They're just going to be in lots, um, that's the only difference there. So yeah, that's really the plan with the Three Lakes region in the southwest corner. There's an opportunity to own a resort. You remember how I said that I want all of the expansion pack features uh, to be playable within this world? Well, that this is me delivering on one of those features, allowing a mountain resort to pop up here. And don't worry, I've got another resort idea planned for a future episode as well. So this isn't going to be the only resort you'll see or at least not the only bot reserved for a resort. It is time to end off this episode. And if you haven't guessed already, we're going to be spending a little more time in the Three Lakes area of SimCity, of the SimCity region, I suppose. And uh, it, there's a lot of great things coming up because I do end up terrain painting it. I end up foresting it. It really looks like a beautiful area. I think you guys will really enjoy it. And plus, you see that river that is uh, climbing up from the delta and off screen well there are even more details to come about with that and i'm very excited uh to show that to you guys and to really show you for once how beautiful this world is actually going to turn out to be it's just that you know this first the first two halves of this series are well <laughs> the first two thirds of this series have been mostly focused on just developing neighborhoods and urban and suburban forms. And now that we're finally in the rural areas, we like I'm forced to my hand is forced in terms of having to switch gears and focus more on geography and really beautifying the region and showing off the geography and topography that I really envision for you guys. So. I think you guys are going to really enjoy the next couple of episodes and especially now that we are past the second half of the series at this point, I think it's all just going to come together really quickly, positively and I think you guys are, I think it'll be a world that you guys will actually be really excited for um, when it comes to actually releasing it. So yeah, next episode, we're sticking to the Three Lakes region. I have more things that I need to develop in there, um, including the road layout. So that actually takes a couple of interesting twists and turns, and you'll learn more about that in an upcoming episode there. Anyways, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to stick around for the tour uh, at the end of this episode. And, you know, if you've enjoyed this episode and if you've enjoyed this series, then feel free to consider liking and subscribing to this video as well. Anyways, thank you so much, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.